promises a knockout tonight. He's six years younger than Rene Alvarado, and, but it's Alvarado who will have almost a three inch reach advantage. And this is for the Super Featherweight Championship of the World. Introducing to you first up, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing purple with silver. He officially weighing in at 129.6 pounds, standing with his trainer, Enrique Centeno. Tonight, he enters this contest with an outstanding record. 28 pounds, 24 victories, 20 wins, coming by way of knockout, three defeats with one draw. Representado Maracay, Venezuela. Introducing to you the challenger, Roger Joaquin Gutierrez. And across the ring tonight, but again in the red corner, standing with trainer Sergio Gonzalez. Tonight wearing the colors of his homeland with blue and white. He originally weighed at already 129.4 pounds. A veteran fighter, a 40 professional contest with a record, an impressive one. 32 victories, along with 21 wins coming by way of knockout against eight defeats. Introducing to you, the WBA Super for the Way Champion of the World, El Arcuyo de Managua, Nicaragua, Edimino Rune Alvarado! Gentlemen, you had your instructions earlier. You know what I expect. A good, clean fight. Just obey my commands and protect yourself at all times. Good luck. Sergio, you love to say familiarity breeds contempt. These men have fought before. What do you expect to see tonight? I like to say violence. It breeds violence, and these guys know each other so well. And the camp that Roger Gutierrez had for this fight, he's only been improving as a fighter, and Alvarado acknowledged that this should be a good one. I think one thing to watch early is the movement of Roger Gutierrez. He said he was far too stationary a target in that first fight. He said he plans to move a lot more in this fight. Gutierrez from Venezuela in the purple trunks. Alvarado from Nicaragua wearing the blue and white. Gutierrez said in their first fight that he broke his hand in the second round and then he just couldn't get the job done. Tonight, he's fresh, he's healthy, he's full of confidence. Sergio, you went on, on a very big limb by calling this the fight of the year. Well, we're only two days in. <laughs> no doubt you're t stealing my line, huh? <laughs> if this holds up for 363 days, kudos to you. No one's landed a punch yet, by the way. No, no, they, look, it's because it's a rematch. It's because they're, they're so heavy-handed. Both of them only go one way. The writing's on the wall, like I said. Already boos. <laughs> oh the fight of the year is being booed out of the building. <laughs> one minute in. Boy, these fans are high expectations here in Dallas, I'm telling you. Well, they saw what Renee's twin brother did a few minutes ago. They expected the same out of Renee. It'll come. Plenty of time to get there. 12 rounds for the WBA Super Featherweight title. Nice snapping straight right hand from Alvarado. Yeah, Alvarado has a, the longer reach, even though he's two, two and a half inches shorter. And there's a fallacy that, that usually the, the shorter fighter can out jab the taller fighter. It's all about timing and getting that front foot in the door. If you can that, do that and spring from a low position, jabbing up, you can have success. Good body shot for Alvarado, who spent two and a half months training in Las Vegas for this fight. Yeah! It's amazing the difference one fight can make. I mean, before the fight with Andrew Cancio, if Alvarado had lost, his chances were he would have been cut by Golden Boy. And who knows where he would have landed up. Now, he wins that fight. He's a world champion. He's a world-made event in a fight like this. And Cancio got cut, right? Correct. It is not a kind business at times. Gutierrez is looking for that counter right hand. Just came up short. It looks like they're different weight classes. I mean, Gutierrez is taller and it looks a lot bigger, wider from the shoulders.
makes the weight class bigger, doesn't he? That stung him. And again, how about this close to round one over Roger Gutierrez? Look at the kid go! And they're all better than that now! Five seconds of round one! And that's what I expected. Get ready for more, Tom. Gutierrez buckling Alvarado with a right hand. And Alvarado coming right back with a right hand of his own. Gutierrez fighting for a bigger purpose tonight. Recently lost his mother to cancer. And that was in November, and here he is in the ring now, and he said, it's my debt to my mother. I owe it to her to bring the world title back to Venezuela in her memory. That's a lot of pressure to put on yourself. Fantastic finish to round one. Let's see what they have in store for us here in the second frame. Oh, nice counter right hand for Alvarado. Gutierrez uh, keeping that chin up a little bit too high. Chris, what was the difference in the Alvarado fight against Cancio? Well, I, mean, I think Alvarado was the more aggressive fighter in that fight. And his shots were just so clean. Some of that was on Cancio. He didn't look like the same fighter in that fight that beat Alberto Machado a couple of times. But Alvarado took the fight to him and landed clean to the point where, you know, the last couple of rounds, Cancio's corner was saying, I'm going to give you only one more or we're going to stop this. So his aggression was the key to that fight. Is that the key to this fight, Sergio? Aggression's the other key for both these fighters. But right now, it's Gutierrez fighting a little bit more uh, patient. You know, uh, Alvarado's coming in, throwing some nice shots in the inside, but I like the way Gutierrez is staying disciplined behind a long jab. Alvarado coming in on an eight-fight winning streak. He hasn't lost since 2017 when Yuriokos Yuri Gamboa beat As for Gutierrez, he changed his career fortunes in July of 2019 when he knocked out Eduardo Rocky Hernandez in the first round. Hernandez considered by many to be a can't-miss prospect. Nice uppercut and a straight left there for Gutierrez. Now, Gutierrez is heavy-handed. His resume isn't rich with a lot of top names. He's got 20 knockouts. And Alvarado learned in the first fight what kind of power Gutierrez has in that first round. He certainly learned in the closing seconds that power is still there. Uppercut from Gutierrez has been fighting backwards most of this round. Yeah, Gutierrez told us that you know he was always looking for the knockout, and when it comes to, to beating a fighter like Alvarado, it's not the power that's going to get him. It's going to be more you know getting on the angle and using speed, just like Yoroki Gambo was able to do with Jojo Diaz. the champ in the white and blue trunks, white gloves, Gutierrez fighting in the memory of his mother who just lost her battle with cancer in November. It's a rematch from 2017, a fight Alvarado won after Gutierrez broke his hand. Ooh, nice uppercut, and that sends Alvarado down! A stunning right uppercut! And Alvarado's hurt, he didn't see that uppercut come from the bottom like that. He doesn't look good. He does not look good. Gutierrez, left straight break. Are we about to see a new world champion crowd in Dallas, Texas? Here comes the kid, Gutierrez. Back to him again. He's down for the second time. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's code red time for an eight. Dropped again. A minute 40 to go here in round two. Gutierrez swinging wildly, trying to back Gutierrez off him a little bit. If you're Gutierrez, you've got to keep looking for that uppercut. The foundation appears to be gone, and uppercut, he's stumbling around again. I love the patience being shown by Gutierrez right here, looking for the clean shot. 
The referee taking a good look. It seems like Alvarado, though, still has his wits. His body just isn't cooperating. Only gonna take one more big punch for Gutierrez. Alvarado has the wits, but right now he's lacking the hits. You can never count out Alvarado, though. 20 knockouts in his 31 wins. Plenty of power himself. Gutierrez might have punched himself out a bit there in those first two minutes. Watch your heads, guys. He just got caught. The left hook, there's another one. Now Alvarado. Gutierrez is looking for that same right uppercut. It's not, it's not gonna land anymore. Alvarado already felt that. See, he's doing it again. And he got caught with a whipping right hand from Alvarado. Because that's a dangerous punch to throw as a lead punch, a straight right uppercut. Blood Nine. trickling down Nine. the face now of Guterres. Gutierrez. And out comes the mouthpiece. That right uppercut is very dangerous to throw as a taller fighter, especially if you keep throwing it over and over, you're bound to get caught. And I think Chris may be onto something. Gutierrez seemed to appreciate those few seconds to collect himself. So we will head to round four, two knockdowns for Roger Gutierrez. All over it. And for somebody who was just dropped down convincingly in a round twice, Rene Alvarado seems pretty fresh. <laughs> round four scheduled for 12 for the WBA super featherweight title. You know, Alvarado does have those seven, those eight losses but he's only been stopped in one of them, so he knows how to go the distance even after being hurt. In a, in a fight that he avenged. So he knows how to react like a champion, and right now his eyes look really clear to me. I like the way that he came out in this round. He looks like he, uh, he rejuvenated, and he's not as hurt as he was in the, in the last round. It's kind of a fickle crowd out say. here, guys. Yeah, there <laughs> They're is. booing after a two <laughs> knockdown round in the third. I mean, give these guys a break. It's like Gotti Ward 4, and they're throwing beer in the ring. The first round went from jeers to cheers, and now we're going back to the booze. They've been spoiled. <laughs> I want to see some more head movement by Gutierrez. Alvarado coming out. Coming out nicely. I mean, he, he, he was dropped, he was hurtling. This is a good run for Alvarado. And you got to wonder in the back of his mind if Gutierrez isn't thinking, man, I gave him everything I had and he's still standing in front of him. Definitely be discouraging. Stop! Stop! You know, one thing, Sergio, I wondered coming into this fight was for Roger Gutierrez, does a beating like he took against Alvarado stick with him? I mean, it wasn't a one punch knockout, it was a corner stoppage, but that was seven rounds of just abuse that Alvarado put on him. Does that kind of memory linger with you after a fight like that? No, of course, but Gutierrez was landing his own shots too. And, and you know, the corner stopped the fight and he has no he has no, no problem with the corner stopping the fight, but he held his own. And now we're seeing a better version of Gutierrez, a more disciplined version of Gutierrez. Box out. They were going back and forth, Chris. I'm telling you, that was a good fight to watch. I mean, it was a one-sided fight, but they're going back and forth, landing big shots. A one-sided fight, be back and forth. They have a one-sided, exciting fight. Well, to your point, Chris, to stick up for Sergio a little bit, you talked about how great Luke Campbell's performance was against Lomachenko. He lost by a wide margin on the scorecards, but that was a competitive Watch fight. Watch your heads. Watch your head. It showed durability. I mean, it wasn't competitive because it wasn't competitive. The scorecards were wide and the 11th round featured a knockdown. You give him credit for hanging in, but that's about it. Hi! We have a COVID capacity sellout, 6,000 fans, American Airlines Center. Good battle here between Rene Alvarado, who's been dropped twice against Roger Gutierrez from Venezuela. That was a good 
round four for Rene Alvarado after all he went through, and he's starting off fast in his fifth round as well. Good straight right for Gutierrez. <coughs> oh, and another one. I should have said straight right from Alvarado, pardon me. But Gutierrez does not look nearly as good as he did two rounds ago. The tables, as we mentioned earlier, have turned to this one. Alvarado's eyes are clean. <coughs> Punching cleanly and putting the pressure on Gutierrez. Yeah, look at Gutierrez's face, blood streaming from his eyebrow. Bruised. Good shoe shine and then downstairs. It feels like Alvarado's starting to find his form as this fight goes along. Easily blocking those punches, carrying them away. Stop! Stop! No, no, no. Power punches landed through round four. Gutierrez 10 better than Alvarado. Overhand right. <laughs> Alvarado with a sneaky right uppercut on his Watch own. Watch your hands. In the inside. Break. I'll be interested to see what Chris Mannix's scorecard looks like after this. Of course, Gutierrez will most likely be in the lead considering he has two knockdowns. Alvarado's did very well in the other rounds. Gutierrez just missed with that same right uppercut. Keep the punches up. <laughs> you think Renee fights like his brother? They have the same mindset. Uh, there's similarities. Uh, Alvarado, I would say, puts a little bit more pressure, and he knows how to spring in the lower position, fights all around him. And Chris talked about this earlier. Alvarado's had a remarkable turnaround in his career. R rarely do we see fighters who enter gatekeeper territory with eight losses come back and become world champions. Box out. And that's Box what Renee Alvarado has done, even Break. though it looked very perilous for him earlier on Watch when he head. dropped twice in the same round. Shifted. Right now it looks it's all going Alvarado's way. Gutierrez bloody backing up. Stop. Break. Time. Stay there. Over it's here. certainly been an interesting contest. They'll take a look now at Gutierrez, which gives us an opportunity to switch it across the pond. Let's see what Garris Davies says about this fight with a scorecard. Hello, Garrett. Okay. Time in. Here we go. Well, what a brilliant Fox. recovery by Alvarado. What a champion he is. He is not giving up that belt. He was so badly hurt and down by Gutierrez Stop. Don't in punch. those early no, no. rounds. But he's really fought his way back hey, into listen. the battle. And Ricky Stop. Hatton sitting with me is just saying, what championship material. What a fight this is. So that's Gareth Davies' scorecard, 48-45 for Gutierrez. Chris Mannix doesn't get along with anybody. I have a feeling his scorecard will look a little different, too. What say you, Chris? Yeah, it's different, Todd. I didn't give Gutierrez those early rounds like Gareth Davies did. Like, like anyone else, you score a 10-7 round with the two knockdowns in the third. But every other round on my scorecard, I gave to Rene Alvarado. I thought in the first round, Gutierrez had a great moment or moments in those last 10 seconds, 15 seconds of the round. But other than that, I feel like this fight's been controlled by the power shots of Rene Alvarado. I could see what he means, but I still got to give credit to Gutierrez, keeping him at, at the distance, fighting this fight, going backwards. Well, no matter whose scorecard you tend to agree with, this fight very much hanging in the balance. Round six, scheduled for 12. And what did you make of it in the corner? Gutierrez kind of refusing his corner to put the Q-tips in his nose to clear, clear him out, right. kind of pushing the arm away when they tried to help him with his cut. Have you ever had a Q-tip in your nose? Well, actually, you have the COVID. No, it, it, when you're trying, <laughs> when yes, you're yesterday, try, in fact. When you're trying to breathe heavy, that's the last thing you need. Also, another ah. thing that's annoying is when you're trying to breathe through your mouth and they, they, they give you water, you choke on the water. So sometimes your cornerman 
it's just let you breathe. Glad you caught that, Sergio, since we've all had Q-tips in our noses Box out. in the last uh, few weeks. Yeah, it's, it, it bothers you, to say the least. You want to be in Alvarado trying to push forward again. Box out. <laughs> Who did you think was going to be the aggressor in this fight? They're both the aggressor, but of course you got to edge it out to Alvarado. But Gutierrez, Box he said out. he learned from the first fight. He learned that that's exactly where he went wrong. He needs to pick his moments when to get aggressive, and he's doing that right now. A running jab for Alvarado. Break. Break. I'd like to see a few more uppercuts from Gutierrez. They were the most successful punches for him in that third round. Uh, uh, oh, oh, a sweeping left hook there for Alvarado. After that second knockdown, he looked like he was in so much trouble. His foundation was rocky. His eyes were clear, but like I said at the time, his body just wasn't really cooperating with him. But Gutierrez couldn't get him out of there, ran out of gas at the end of the round, and this is where we are right now with the Nicaraguan pushing forward and landing more punches. I like where he's at. If he continues fighting that distance, he can't get lazy. It's gonna only take one punch from Alvarado to change the tide. Yeah, but that cut's in a bad place for Gutierrez. It's bleeding right now to the left of that eye, but if Alvarado hits it a couple more times. It can open up quickly right over that eye. The judges are human. They look at a guy's face. They see blood streaming down it. Vaseline dripping off. His face is red. Looks like he's getting beat up. Even if he's not perhaps as damaged as he appears. But he is damaged because Alvarado has not stopped punching. And it looks like Alvarado's catching a second win. Box putting out. a lot more Box pressure out. on Gutierrez. And that's what I want to see from Gutierrez right now. Smother the punches of Alvarado. Hold on if you have to. After Rene Alvarado's loss to Yuri Gamboa back in 2017, Alvarado and his manager met with Golden Boy and basically pleaded with them, please keep us under contract, we won't let you down. He hasn't lost since right. and became a world champion. Sometimes all we need in life is a second chance. And Alvarado has made the most of his. Frank, I don't know. Alvarado, the twin brother of Rene, fought in the last bout, winning by knockout over a very determined and tough DJ Creel. Let's see if the twin brother can get a victory as well. We're in round seven, scheduled for 12. WBA Super Featherweight title on the line. Alvarado, the champ, Gutierrez in the purple, the challenger. Good round so far for Gutierrez. Put his punches together a lot more, more than since we've seen it in that third round. Cut again right there by Alvarado. Gutierrez has never scored a knockout after round six. His power is fleeting as we prepare to go into the eighth and a nice left hook counter for Rene Alvarado. Stop. Thank you. We are in round eight, scheduled for 12. Been a very close contest. Hard fought. Let's send it to a man who knows a little bit about these blood and gut warrior type of battles. Ricky Hatton over in the UK. What are your thoughts, champ? Stop. Yeah, the, the fight, the, the very, very intriguing fight. It's totally in the barracks. I mean, Alvarado is going to probably kill himself tomorrow that he never 
took, you know, finished the fight when he when he had the chance, and now Alvarado has got straight back into the fight. Gutierrez is doing some well, uh, good stuff. I don't know if his confidence is totally, totally gone on. He might be saving himself for a big push down the home straight. He's had his successes, but uh, at the minute, Alvarado's, Alvarado's bossing it, I think, at the minute. I think Ricky meant Gutierrez is going to kick himself uh, tomorrow if he doesn't finish or get this win because he had those two knockdowns, and I agree totally with Ricky Had. When you let those knockdowns uh, uh, pass, and I've been there before, just you never get them back. It, it's a time where you could have been a world champion and just step them again. Well, to defend Gutierrez a little bit, he did step oh. on the gas. He just ran out of gas at the end of that round. Yeah, the last 90 seconds of that round were completely different. Stop! No, no. And since those okay. two knockdowns, Gutierrez hasn't really had that oh wow moment. Without oh, yeah. wow, yeah. Or big punches, big power shots that have affected Box Gutierrez. Out. Most notably the one that busted his eye open. Uh -huh. Gutierrez, as you see on his trunks, in a big part, dedicating tonight's performance to his late mother who died of cancer after a long battle in November. Stop! Stop! No, 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 no. Come on. You know, death like that can motivate a fighter. We all fight for something. And anytime I hear tragedies like that, I always think of James Buster Douglas before Mike Tyson. Good point. Where his mother had passed, I, I think it was a week or two before that, he had the greatest night of his life. be a double-edged sword, as you know. It can inspire you to greatness, or it can almost weigh you down, the emotion that you carry into the ring with you. Gutierrez tried that right uppercut again. This time, Alvarado blocked it. I think about Alvarado's hit to that uppercut now. He should, Gutierrez should come around with a right hook instead of the right uppercut now. Break. 10 seconds left here in round eight. Back to back, quieter rounds for both fighters. Stop! He has been knocked out. Obviously, Lomachenko managed to put him down. We've all been down, but he hasn't been out. Todd Grisham, Sergio Moore ringside, along with Chris Mannix, Kate Abdo, and Gareth Davies, and Ricky Hatton on the other side of the pond. Get a look at Gareth and Chris's scorecards out. soon. They couldn't have been Box any out. more different the last time we checked him out. Let's see if we have a little more parry. Break, don't punch. All right, Chris, how do you have it scored through eight full rounds? I think Roger Gutierrez started to do some better work over those last two rounds, uh, landing some cleaner shots. Alvarado slowed down a little bit, so I've got it even up, 75-75 in this fight. Big opportunity still for Gutierrez, but he's got to get more active to try to take the uh, title away from Alvarado. We'll hear from Gareth in just a minute. Right. Chris Mannix has it all square. Does it feel like that kind of fight for you, Sergio? Well, with those two knockdowns, I would, I would, I would probably think Gutierrez will be up one or two points, but I can see how it's close like that. But either way, I think Gutierrez is either fighting time and saving some energy for the later rounds, or Rene Alvarado has found a second no, here, no, 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 pushing no, no, no. the fight to Gutierrez. All right, without further ado, we send it over to the UK, where Gareth Davies gives us his scorecard. <laughs> Um, I don't disagree with the gents over there ringside, but you know what? I think Alvarado is pushing forward more and being the aggressor right. in this fight. Ricky and I are watching this very intently. And like Chris, I've got it 75 apiece um, after eight rounds. It's a very close fight. But for me, Alvarado is the aggressor right now. And I think if he continues this way, he will take the fight. But what a fight it is. It's a brilliant fight to start Box the year. Out. I do like that. Gareth and I have the same scorecard, but outside of that 10 second round, I don't think we've scored one exactly the same at this point. Sergio, which person would you tend to believe in scoring a, a, a fight? 
Chris Mannix for Gareth Davis. Uh, whenever it comes to something like that, I always, I always go with whoever dresses better. Than Gareth Davis. Better that's, style. That's a tremendous criteria. <laughs> Don't forget Chris Mannix's spray tan. Break. Another quiet round by both these fighters. I mean, after the hellacious start of this fight, you know, to go back and fight behind the jab and show discipline like Gutierrez is. It's smart for him to do, but it's also give, encouraging Alvarado to come forward, put the pressure on, and get these rounds, these middle rounds. I love the way Alvarado tries to close strong last 10 seconds, trying to get his late shots in. And another one of those rounds where he can really give it to you. minutes, keep punching. What do these two have in store for us? The final three rounds. Rene Alvarado and Roger Gutierrez. Box out, man. The WBA Super Featherweight title is on the line. And it, and it does feel like Gutierrez is letting this fight slip away from him after those two knockdowns. This is a championship fight. You have, you have to bring out the champion in you. Consistently Box like out. that. No holding. No holding. Earlier, Gareth Davies said that Gutierrez might have some regrets about not going for that knockout earlier. What Break. regrets Break. would Alvarado okay. have so far through 10 rounds? What could he have done better? Not get knocked down, but <laughs> other than that, there's no regrets right now. He's doing exactly what he needs to do. He showed the heart of the champion. He's coming forward. He regrouped, and he might be winning this fight back in this fight. The momentum shifted. I mean, that just shows courage and championship heart. Yeah, I don't think Alvarado will have any regrets as to how this fight has right. played out, at least not up until this point. I mean, he said himself, watching Gutierrez film, Gutierrez is a better fighter than the one he faced a few years ago, and we're seeing that advancement tonight. Box out, man. <laughs> Alvarado and his brother Felix are the second twin brothers to simultaneously hold world titles in boxing history. Name the first, Sergio. Twin brothers, simultaneous world champions. Recent times, recent times. Oh, Charlos. There you go. There you go. Jermel yeah. and Jermal. Well, that jab stunned Gutierrez, I think. That was a power jab by Alvarado. Gutierrez clinching. but just as physical as Alvarado and Gutierrez continue to batter away at each other. And now we get set for the championship right. rounds live Stop. here on DAZN from Dallas, Texas. Uncharted territory for the Venezuelan here as we enter the 11th round. Uncharted territory in the championship rounds. And this is what I'm talking about, the championship spirit. edge here down the stretch, Sergio. It just feel, it feels like Alvarado has a little bit more uh, uh, pep in his step and pep in his punch. Coming Stop forward, punch. it feels like Gutierrez is, is uh, comfortable just fighting off Alvarado instead of, instead of going forward and trying to push the fight to Alvarado. The, the better moments for Gutierrez in this fight have been when he's on the inside like this. He's been throwing punches right. these last handful of rounds. When he's bent inside, he's just tied up and leaned on Alvarado. He's got to get back to throwing punches on the inside. Well, it's interesting. You look at these two guys, and Gutierrez looks Stop. taller, no, no, no. he looks longer, but 
fact, it's Alvarado who has a three-inch reach advantage. <laughs> Both men still moving pretty well, though. No one's putting their feet in cement and just throwing bombs. When both fighters are moving well, they're gonna you're gonna score the, the fighter moving forward, and Alvarado's moving forward, putting the pressure. Box out, no, no. You can tell both of these men train extremely hard. They look relatively fresh considering what they've been through, and we're in round number 11. Gutierrez told us he was training in the in the mountains, at altitude of Medellin, Colombia. He sparred over 130 rounds. I mean, so fatigue shouldn't be a factor here. <laughs> Stop. Gutierrez just three losses. That's a pretty good. Whoa, a swing and a miss from the hills there from Alvarado. Great. Gutierrez, every punch landed counts now. And here's this one, we'll go to the scorecards, and both Gareth Davies and Chris Mannix had it even just a few rounds ago. So anyone can win this fight, hypothetically, with just two rounds left. Great, great. 10 seconds to go here in round 11. This fight has been spectacular at times. Had some lulls in the action, but both men continue to throw. Nice. Don't go there. Three minutes left. WBA Super Featherweight title on the line. This is the 12th and final round. Let's hear from Ricky Hatton over in England. What do you think, Ricky? To be honest with you, it's such a difficult fight to, to, to score. All the rounds are very, very close. And you know what? As, as judges, you know, you don't want to sit on the fence and give them even rounds. But I, I just think, you know, that Alvarado is the one that's putting the pressure on. And, you know, you know Gutierrez is, is, is on the back foot throwing four or five little patter patter shots to try and try and nick the fight. But I think Alvarado wants it more. I think, to be honest with you, he's, he's under pressure here, Gutierrez. He needs a big last round. That's exactly what I'm feeling at the moment. I think it's on my card as well. Alvarado, I think I've got a couple ahead here. He really. Oh, wants to excuse go. me, guys. It was a left hook that sent Alvarado down here in the 12th and final round. Second lockdown. Oh, this is incredible. Come here. Absolutely. So Alvarado's down. Sorry to interrupt you guys, but a huge moment here in the 12th round as Gutierrez just locked this thing up. And it was a half hook, half uppercut. That caught him as a 45-degree 45, 45 punch. Alvarado has come back fighting before. He needs something magical. He could need a knockdown as well here right. to keep pace with the kid. And if you're Gutierrez, you've got 90 seconds to change your career, to become a world champion and set yourself up with bigger fights and bigger paydays. Huge final minute for Gutierrez. Three knockdowns in the fight for Roger Gutierrez, but will that be enough? Alvarado's done so well in between. Great. How aggressive would you be if you're Roger Gutierrez? Well, if you're Gutierrez, you have three knockdowns, and I would feel, I wouldn't get too aggressive. I would just think, I would end out right now behind the jab, knowing that those three knockdowns are half the fight. Great. Oh no, Sergio, go for broke in a situation like this. The fight, at best, is way too close. You can't rest back. You've got to look for the knockout. 45 seconds for glory. Don't forget Gutierrez fighting in memory of his mother who died of cancer just in November. Great. So much emotion being carried into the ring tonight for the kid. <laughs> and he has delivered with some wicked heavy-handed shots. Gutierrez told us, Chris, that that's where he went wrong in the first fight. He was over aggressive and stood in the inside too long with Alvarado. That's what he's not doing this fight, and that's why I think he's more strategic. Yeah, but that was over seven rounds. I'm talking about the final 45 seconds. Here we go. Ten seconds left. Alvarado trying to break the clinch. He knows he needs something dramatic here, but he's not going to get it. There you have it. Do we have a new 
champion. If you knock your opponent down three times, the odds of winning the fight are probably in the high upper 90 percentile. But that may not be the case in this one. Correct, Chris Mannix? May not be. Most of these rounds, I thought, were controlled by Rene Alvarado. But the third round was brilliant. Two knockdowns for Gutierrez. He gets a knockdown in the 12th. We'll see if Rene Alvarado can survive that type of onslaught. <laughs> Here we go. The pivotal moment in the final round. Gutierrez, the left hook right on the bridge of the nose and the chin. Just enough. And those are the punches that hurt the most when you clip the chin. You barely clip the chin. And look at how the knees buckle of Alvarado. Ladies and gentlemen, from here for the American Airlines Center, how about a big round of applause for our boxers here at South the Ring tonight? After 12 championship rounds of boxing, we now go to the judges' scorecard. All three judges have the identical score, 113, 112. But you win by unanimous decision. And the new Taipei Superfight Champion of the World from Maracaibo, Venezuela. to his mother. He needed the knockdown in the last round, the very last round, and he got it. And look at the emotion coming from Roger Gutierrez. I'm emotional, Todd. I mean, James Buster Douglas, we talked about what he did in Tokyo, Japan, and Mike, with Mike Tyson, and that upset after his mother died. Same thing with Roger Gutierrez here. I mean, this is as best and as emotional as it gets. That's a real fighter right there on Gutierrez and the new champion. Congratulations to him. What a war, and salute again to Rene Alvarado. It takes two to tango in a fight like this, and you gotta believe we'll see a trilogy somewhere down the line. It's just too good not to happen. We're forced to have a trilogy here, and just all credit to Roger Gutierrez. He fought with emotion, he fought with heart, determination, and this is what this sport is all about, Tom. Gutierrez, and I'm quoting here, said, if my mom could beat cancer for so long, and held in there for so long. Why can't I become a world champion in her memory? And that's what he did tonight. Right here, look at my